You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 13th of March, 2018. We see the S&P 500 down a little bit for the day. The Q's up. The NASDAQ 100 is what the Q's, of course, represents. TLT, 20-year bonds, up 0.58%. Gold is flat. Let's jump first into the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. Weekly chart is still down, my friends. It does look like the week is starting off with a roaring up green candle, but that's only the first day of a five-day candle. Derivative oscillator has been losing energy since the week ending the 9th of March. So again, we're starting this week off with that derivative oscillator losing energy. Price percent oscillator is headed up toward the red signal line, and we have a green Big green candle starting the week off. Price movement is well above the two-day trend line. And, of course, the weekly still in a down move. It is well above that. Also, we'll continue to keep our eye on things. Again, it was down 0.13% for the day. You might say, well, then why is that first candle such a big green up candle? It's because the way the Heiken Ashi candlestick is calculated. We have a great training. I think we're up to about 65,000 people have taken it. It's free. You can find it at chartingwealth.com or at our YouTube channel, Charting Wealth. Please go listen to that. We're very proud of it. It's got a lot of good graphics in there and explains Heiken Ashi candlesticks very well. Heiken Ashi means average pace in Japanese. It's calculated differently than the standard candlestick, high open, low close. And it helps us really see price movement a whole lot more accurately. And you don't have to memorize all those different kinds of patterns. I just think it's a much more accurate way to look at things. Let's keep moving through these charts. We see on the two-day chart, we're into our third two-day candle. This is just the first half of the latest two-day candle, just the first day, the 12th Monday. So we'll continue to watch price movement, of course, well above the two-day trend line with that crossover going up back on the 9th. Derivative oscillators gaining energy, price percent oscillator moving up nicely. Continue to watch that. What do we see going on on the four-hour chart? Up movement in the morning on Monday and then sort of flattening off in the afternoon. So again, we had that original crossover on the four-hour chart back on the afternoon of Wednesday the 7th. So we'll just keep an eye on things and see what the S&P 500 is actually going to shake out and do over the course of the week. There ends up being a strong downturn and it pulls that two-day chart over. Might have an opening for some kind of down move, but we don't at the moment. We'll just see if it recovers and just continues to go up. Don't forget, at the end of this month, we have our quarterly chart training for you, and that is on the S&P 500. For those of you who know about how magical this chart is, you go back 20 years on this chart it shows you when to get in and when to get out of the market at each really important point. So, and we, we talk about the Trump effect. We'll have a great teaching for you. This latest quarterly candle, of course, closes at the end of this month. And that's when we'll be having the training. But you have to be, you have to be a subscriber. And you do that. It's easy to do any day of the week. Just go to chartingwealth.com. And sign up. We can see this latest crossover going up. It's been beautiful for you. What the jumping in point somewhere around 222 and it's up to 271 in four months. Not bad, is it, my friends? Again, that's the beauty of this quarterly chart. We're going to be offering that training again to you for free. And we'll be covering what the latest candle shows us at the close of March. So go ahead, chartingwealth.com, put in your name, email address, and you'll be on the list, my friends. So that's where we are on the S&P 500. Let's go to the Qs, up 0.53%. We see things continuing to blast up, going into the fifth week of up movement after the big down move. We did, of course, on this last Friday, have the weekly vertical crossover going up. We told you about that, and of course, that has occurred. And... We are looking, we're continuing to watch as the candle moves up. We had a jumping in point around 1030 on Monday morning as we teach you with that weekly chart. And of course, things are rolling along quite nicely. The power 
of the weekly vertical crossover tends to work again and again and again. We never had a proper jumping in point immediately following the crossover on this past candle. Those of you who recall how things slid sideways and we never had a proper jumping in point on QQQ. But we have had a crossover going up. We did have a proper jumping in point and we'll see how far this latest up move goes. How long in the tooth is the market getting? Well, it's long, long, long in the tooth. We'll continue to watch. It'll go up for as long as it tends to go up. Once, of course, gold hits about 1350 or so, you can probably expect the markets to be rolling over. You're going to have to see a lot of appreciation, I think, in gold before you're going to see these markets come down. One reason we track gold with you every single day. That's where we are on the weekly. Again, derivative oscillators losing downward momentum hasn't crossed over yet. We'd like to see that, of course, in the green, but we don't yet. But of course, the price percent oscillator, our main oscillator, is up and crossed over. That's why we had the weekly vertical crossover. That's what it's all about. Of course, the two-day chart crossed over going up back on the 7th, Wednesday the 7th. It always precedes the weekly. Sometimes they cross together. That's a little quirky. We like the two-day to cross first and then the weekly after. And then, of course, we have lots of up movement. We have two and a half up candles. And, of course, the candle, the latest, first day of the latest two-day candle up nicely, actually pushing above the Bollinger Bands, derivative oscillator gaining energy. And as we look at the four-hour chart, what do we see? Strong movement in the morning, paired off a little bit in the afternoon. Again, didn't go much higher than the high uh, noted on the Heiken Ashi candlestick in the morning. And we see the derivative oscillator not moving up, I'm sorry, price percent oscillator not moving up quite as strong as it had been in the prior days. Again, pairing off just a little bit. Derivative oscillator continuing to gain energy. That's where we are on the queues. We'll continue to monitor that. Of course, all of you who were on our Texting list, you got that notice of the Q crossover going up on the NASDAQ 100 over the weekend. Have to be in the States to sign up for that. Everybody who subscribes to the Daily Market Review in your email every day, you get the instructions on how to sign up for the texting service. Have to be in the States. It is free. And of course, if you listen to the comprehensive review and forecast over the weekend for our international friends, we always tell you about those crossings over so you don't miss out either. It's just not quite as convenient. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about TLT, 20-year bonds, up 0.58%. Of course, bonds had a beautiful weekly vertical crossover going down all the way back on the 5th of January, and we had, oh gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks of down movement after that. Things have sort of been sliding sideways going into the third week. So far, we see it's hard to tell. Maybe a green doji? Uh, it's just the first day, so we really don't have to worry about that of the, of the five-day candle. Uh, the derivative oscillator losing energy. Price percent oscillator. This is what's important. It's gone flat, so we'll continue to keep an eye on things. Like we said, up 0.58% for the day. We see that played out more in the two-day chart. Of course, it crossed over going up back on the 5th and has really just slidden sideways since then, sort of a green spinning top so far. Lots of indecision tending up. Derivative oscillator gained a little bit of energy. Price percent oscillator heading up. And as we delve in to our smallest chart, we can see up movement in the morning and the afternoon. Is that movement going to stop as it has the la like going on potentially the third time on that 50-day simple moving average? Perhaps so. Remember, these moving averages, we track the 200 and the 50, and those simple moving averages can many times be ceilings or floors. So far, the 50 has been a floor on the four-hour chart. So we'll just continue to keep an eye on things and see if indeed it does do that. We do have a sort of a crossover, a bounce off the red signal line going up. Derivative oscillators turn positive. We'll just watch and see what we see. We don't currently have a trade on TLT because, of course, we've got the weekly going down and the two-day going up. So we'll just continue to watch and monitor. And when there is a trade, we'll let you know and we'll practice it. Okay, see what's going on on the weekly chart in gold. Gold 
Now, we started to call it crossing over at the end of this last week, but it just didn't feel right. It wasn't very strong. It did cross over over the course of the day on the candlestick and the price percent oscillator. Again, as we told you, price on gold was flat for the day, just flat. Now, we do see a red down candle for the first day. Price movement is below the week, the two-day trend line, and of course, below the weekly. And as we look at the two-day chart, of course, we had that crossover going down in gold all the way back on the two-day chart on the 7th of February. It went down for a few days, up for four days, down for a number of days, and then sort of sideways tending down for the last week or so. And of course, we have a red candle forming down. Price percent oscillators negative, derivative oscillators negative. As we look at the four-hour chart, again, four-hour chart sort of crossed, it crossed over going down in the morning and then sort of bounced back over in the afternoon. Don't feel good about any of that because it was still in an up move after strong up movement on the 6th. And then it's just sort of gone down. But the, again, four-hour chart's really disappointing us, folks. And again, don't have a trade in gold at the moment. We will continue to monitor gold. And once it sorts itself out and really starts some moves up or down, we'll look more to jump into a trade there. But again, where's our trade right now? It is in the queues. And we'll continue to monitor that and watch it and keep you posted. And we'll keep you posted on these other ETFs, gold, 20-year bonds, NASDAQ 100, and the S&P 500. We'll keep you apprised on those as we do every day. We love to hear from you. If you have questions, problems, concerns, please, by all means, write to us. Of course, all you subscribers that didn't get a chance to listen to Chapter 8, the minor indicators, including how we use the exponential moving averages the moving averages, the simple moving averages, the derivative oscillator, and the Bollinger Bands. That's what Chapter 8 is all about. We're going to repost that again on the email going out to all of our subscribers. And again, to get all that information, my friends, you need to subscribe at chartingwealth.com. Doesn't cost you a thing. It's priceless. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.